Uh, my name is Lars Grimstad. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Saga Robotics. We make self-driving robots for agriculture. We focus on strawberries and grape wine grapes. And what our robots do is that they treat plants without the use of chemicals. They do this at night and they're fully autonomous. So every night these robots will be driving around treating plants. You presented and you basically said that in 2022, you had one like farm where you had these robots deployed. And then in 2023, there were five farms using your robots. And then in 2024, it was 10% of all strawberries in the UK were used your robots for picking or for the UV? Yeah, for the UV. So we're treating 10% and 20% this year. Yeah, so it's a like insane growth. So you did, of course, experiment with quite a lot of different use cases and so on. But like, how is that possible? To scale like that, we, we did play around for several years when we were still in academia. as so we got to, to test a lot of things and we made a lot of connections. And then once you have one farm farmer saying that this is great stuff, I want to continue with this. And then the neighbors want the same thing, right? And then it just suddenly it was a thing that people wanted. And now obviously we have a very talented guy going around selling this as well. But I want to ask about that as well. Like when farmers start using these robots, it's probably quite a good conversation starter because the neighbors and everyone around is going to be like, what's going on in your fields? Yeah, yeah. no, they definitely like being seen as a bit high tech in the forefront of technology. Yeah. They love robots, that's good for us. <laughs> yeah. So our robots, they visit every plant twice a week. And we figured why not just put some cameras on the robots and see what we see or try to see some, yeah, look at the plants, see if we can help our customers. So now we're counting all the flowers, all the fruit, and then we provide that information to our customers and that helps them kind of plan when they are kind of deploying their pickers and so on. Yeah, and you're now even measuring the ripeness of all the different like berries in the field. Yeah, so we have eight different kind of classes of ripeness. Yeah. Tell uh, our customer exactly how ripe this fruit is. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say also quite mind blown by you said that like the farmers operate this themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, in, in initially in the beginning, we kind of hired or employed the operators, like seasonal workers but we want to move this to our customers. And that has been gone much better and much smoother than we had thought, to be honest. Last year was the first year we did it. And our best performing robots were operated by our customers, oh, really? which was really cool to see. Oh, wow. But yeah, no, it's basically you make sure that the robot's fully charged and press play. And especially in the US, we have like the fields are so massive. So the robot will just drive itself to where it's operating. That can be like a 15, 20 minute drive. So you definitely don't want anyone to have to deal with that manually. So yeah, you hit play and then the robot goes out and comes back when it's finished. So it's like almost like a robot vacuum, but it just goes into the field and yeah. UV lights all the mold off all the plants. Exactly. That's insane. Uh, and like, how do you see kind of robotics developing? So for the last 10 years, robots have been two years away every year. I feel that's what people have been saying, but now they're actually here. So we, yeah, as, we, as we mentioned, we do 20% of all strawberries grown in the UK this year. We plan on continue to scale. And I think robots is becoming much more, it's now a thing in farming. It, it wasn't that, like a few years back, that was, it wasn't the thing. And I think we'll see new applications, even like conventional applications like spraying whatever taken over by more automated equipment but also new and exciting applications like for instance the uv treatment treatments that kind of require very high frequency for to work and therefore it's also it's a perfect application to optimize and i think you'll see more stuff like that things that like high frequency farming enabled by automation basically what do you think about like the trade-off between trying to do something super generalized and these like more specific robot niches. Yeah, I think you, it's, it's important to try to keep things as simple as possible, yeah. obviously to a point. So we, if we were to do what we do with humanoid robots, that would be an absolute pain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's possible, but it sounds like a tough job. So like in our case, we want to make something that's general enough that we can do multiple tasks on the farm, but we're still, we're always at the farm, right? So we don't have to be super general. We need a machine reliably and robustly navigates up and down the field and then we add tools to it so yeah we don't want to overcomplicate it if we don't have to yeah and what are the use cases are you seeing that your customers are 
exploring. So we've been experimenting with a few different things. So in strawberries, there's something called, or in a lot of crops, there's something called beneficials, which is basically nice insects mm -hmm. that eat bad insects. Okay. Um, you get these in kind of a bag of like pellets and they just live in the pellets and you just distribute them over the crop. Okay. And that's a pretty, they will go around with these almost like salt shakers and, and spread out these mites. So what we want to do is just stick on a dispenser on our robot because we're out driving anyways, right? And we did some trials on that this year. So basically we have a little dispenser of mites that would just drop insects into the crop, which is also very kind of, I would say environmental friendly way of treating pests, right? Rather than spraying, mm. you distribute some insects. How much effort does it require, require to, to develop a thing? How much do we get paid? And try to figure out which one to, to focus on. But yeah, now this is the first year where we're selling, basically selling data or you know, rather information extracted from data that we collect. I also read that the farmers make 40% ROI on the robots in the first year. Yeah, oh. that, that's a bad, yeah, it depends on where you are and so on. So the thing is, they don't buy the robot, right? They just pay for it as a service. So there's no like, they just, they just pay and we retreat, right? So there's not like a huge investment for them at any point. We perform better than the chemicals. So there are added benefits beyond what you would get from chemicals, right? Mm -hmm. So the return on investment for the growers is pretty good. Just by not having to use as much pesticides, doesn't that make the berries themselves better and like in general just reduce the amount of things that we might not need in our food? Yeah, definitely. And also I would like the workers who have to deal with the chemicals, right? There's a lot of issues with the use of chemicals. But even from a practical perspective, like if you spray chemicals on the plants, people can't move go into the field for a few days, right? Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, it's pretty powerful, like s s strong stuff. So I think UV is, is better in so many ways. I think, like I would say, in general, hardware is pretty hard, and a lot of people get to experience that. But I would say we have some cool companies from Norway, right? We had the uh, Auto Store, which is they're huge, right? So they they've been leading the way in, in warehouse uh, robotics. One X is pretty cool. Like we have all these companies around, but it is it is hard. We. We started, as I mentioned, we started from the university and had a safe space to play around in through different research projects and so on. So we got to do a lot of the development without too much kind of fresh pressure, financial pressure. So we got a head start in that sense. If we were to start from like nothing, go out and get the venture money and start from nothing, that would be hard, yeah. I think. So we're lucky in that sense that we're in so many research projects built a, basically up a company before we had to go out and raise money. We did so much weird stuff with that robot. So we definitely got to learn like what, what works, what, what does not work. And while we were doing this, like we had a very kind of strong focus on always focusing on robust and reliable autonomy because that is the core thing that the robot has to do well, right? So we got the, so several years of just making robust autonomy while also playing around with different applications, trying out like what, what, what makes sense, what does the grower like, what can, is kind of achievable. Yeah. So yeah, we, we had this playground for several years, right? It was great. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun to just experiment with these different use cases. What were some of the maybe not so bright ideas looking back that you explored? Oh, good question. I think most of the applications were pretty cool. We had some that, we had one project where we had this huge sensor, it was massively expensive. And what it did was that like, it would measure soil moisture by counting neutrinos that got bounced off the ground. Really? It was like, it was very cool, but like we didn't really see an immediate business case for it. <laughs> but it was super cool. Yeah, a lot of like applications like that, where you, the stuff on the robot is just too expensive to sell in that sense. Like farmers, uh, yeah, uh, so they can't spend too much money per acre. I guess that's like some of the uh, building blocks for how the design ended up as well. Whereas there's this arch, so you have this like equipment on wheels in a sense. And that, yeah, maybe it wouldn't have been so obvious if there wasn't for this experimentation. Yeah, and I guess the thing we did very early on is that we wanted to make everything, like the robot, as modular as possible. Yeah. Because we wanted to use it in different environments. From starting with our second robot that we built in 2016, everything was modular. 
So it was basically a Lego for field robots. So you can very easily reconfigure a robot from one environment to another environment. Just have, yeah, place out the modules and have very simple interfaces between them, a simple frame and you're ready to go. Yeah, super freaking cool. Yeah. Our robots drive around on their own at night or kind of they're self-driving. When they drive around, they treat the plants with UV lights, which make sure that mildew and other pests can't establish, so you have very healthy berries. This has to happen at night because of like weird biological reasons, and it has to happen quite often, so it's like the perfect, perfect application for like robots. Yeah, yeah, because if it doesn't happen often enough, then... Then you get mildew. It's like a preventative treatment. So yeah, and yeah, often and at night, robots. Yeah. <laughs> so over time pays incentive to adopt the robots faster. <laughs> okay. Super. I'm freaking excited. I want to see the market share grow even further. What do you think is feasible in the next 10 years, let's say? World domination, of course. Now that we hope to expand as much as possible in, in like, we started out in the UK and the US as our kind of first big markets, but then we want to expand to the rest of Europe, Australia, and just get this robot out to more people. We also want to expand to different crops. Right now we're focused on strawberries and grapes, but we want to move to other crops as, as well because they have this disease affects basically all the crops. Yeah, and then just keep adding applications, adding tools to, to the platform so we can generate as much value as possible for our customers. It'd be cool to be asked to come here and, and talk to you guys about the things that we do. It's a, a very cool community that you guys are building. But yeah, look forward to see this grow. Yeah, super cool. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs>